ruptures across the earth's floor, cracked roads and rattled residents. We remember this all too well. Last month's twin earthquakes right near Ridgecrest left billions of dollars in damage. Now, some of the first re researchers to arrive there on scene were from UCLA's engineering program. And joining me today to talk all about it from UCLA is Professor of Civil Engineering, Dr. Jonathan Stewart, with what they found and learned. Doctor, thank you so much for the time. I'm glad to join you. Yeah, so I know you did extensive work up there. I was, I was telling you, I was trying to read through all your reports, but what was the most interesting thing you discovered? Probably the most significant effect of the earthquake we investigated was the rupture of the surface of the earth from the faulting. It was truly extraordinary from this earthquake. We had rupture both from the initial July 4th earthquake and then a separate rupture on July 5th. Uh, the first being about 10 kilometers, the second being about 50 in length. Well, where did you find most of the damage? Was it at the Naval Air Weapons Station, China Lake? Yeah, probably the most acute damage in terms of structures uh, and effects on the population would be in the base because the July 5th rupture went right through the base. Um, something like 80% of that rupture was within the base and uh, their operations were definitely affected. Of course, we felt the shaking. I mean, everyone did across, for the most part, Southern California. You were there. Talk to me about that. You went up there the, the day the first 6.4 struck. Tell me what you went through the following day. Yeah, that's right. We, we try to get to the field as quickly as we reasonably can, and we were able to get into the field uh, in the afternoon of July 5th, uh, and we thought we were just responding to the 6.4 July 4th earthquake. Uh, after uh, ending our work that day, going back to the hotel, uh, we were just gathering up, getting ready to go to dinner when the magnitude 7.1 uh, hit. Uh, and so uh, that, that certainly got our attention. I can say that uh, having been to earthquakes all over the world over the last 25 years, this is the strongest shaking that I've ever felt because we were right there in Ridgecrest. Um, we were in a parking lot, so I wasn't personally threatened, and I was just absorbing everything that I was seeing and feeling. Um, and it was quite an experience as somebody who studied earthquakes for a long time to, to really feel such strong shaking. Oh, yeah. Did you see people running? I, you know, I know you were in the parking lot, but what did you see going on around you or then hear about people's stories afterward? Well, there was a few things that I had always wanted to observe if I ever got the chance to feel a strong earthquake. Uh, one is that people often report seeing long waves that you can physically see on the surface of the earth. Uh, and that I was not actually able to see. But what I did see is I saw electrical lines arcing and sending off sparks near our hotel. I saw people uh, running out of the building uh, and, and obviously panicked and very upset, uh, understandably. That's what they're not supposed to do, by the way. You should not run out of a building during an earthquake. Um, I could see the building next to me moving uh, quite dramatically <laughs> and the cars uh, moving in the parking lot. So it, it was a, a very dramatic event. And in the meantime, I was having trouble standing up because the, the shaking was strong enough. It almost knocked me over. Yeah, oh, I can imagine. All right, so uh, doctor, you were up there and professor, you were up there for an entire week. Who's gonna use this research that you put together? So I was there with a group called uh, GEAR, which stands for Geotechnical Extreme Events Reconnaissance. We do reconnaissance for events all over the world. And the idea is to gather perishable data uh, after an earthquake like this to see how the built environment, how the natural environment actually performed during the earthquake. We use that data to build models, uh, models for all sorts of things like, uh, is the ground gonna liquefy in future earthquakes? How strong will the shaking be? Uh, what is the nature of surface rupture in future earthquakes? Over how wide of a zone do we see that? Uh, things like that are all produced by engineers and geologists in the form of models, and those models need data. If we were to wait a month or two months go get that data, much of it would be lost. So you have to get out there quickly and gather the perishable data. All right, well done. Information we need before the next big one so we can be ready. Professor of Civil Engineering, Dr. Jonathan Stewart, thanks for the time.